Well, good evening or good morning or happy Wednesday evening, Saturday morning, or whenever you may be watching this. Uh, this is our little Wednesday night Vespers, and as you can tell, my camera view is not exactly what I wanted it to be. But it is what it is. But I wanted to come out here to this special spot that is behind where we used to live. Uh, it's uh, Doug Ponder, I believe, was raised here, and a couple other people were raised here. And I wanted to check out this nice little old timey house when, when need was something that was actually present. It's not something that we kind of just think we know about, but need was something that was present. And that's really what I want to look at tonight as we look at a little snippet from the book of Jonah. Now, before we really get started, I want to say a quick prayer to kind of set our, set our minds right as we cover through some scripture. So if you don't mind, would you pray with me? Father God, thank you for this opportunity that we have, that we can use this technology and, and reach out to, to spread the knowledge that's contained in this Bible. Lord, please help me to be a, a, a good scholar and, and, a, and a good teacher of the lessons that this, this, this small little snippet has, has taught me. Lord, help me to be brief but concise and correct in the way that you want your scripture to be explained. Lord, thank you for your son Jesus. It's in his name I pray. Amen. All right, so right quick, like I said, I'm, I'm going to try to keep our discussion here fairly fairly brief so you can you can hopefully get what we're going to get out of this and I don't get attacked by my cows here. But I go back to this discussion of need. The people that lived in this house right here, you know, when they had a, a farm crop that, that didn't come in, they ran into a really serious problem. And some of y'all that might be listening to this video right now might, have, might know what that feeling of need is. And so I want you to kind of think about in your mind, have you ever had a situation of need? You know, I'm, I'm from the generation of being able to go to Burger King and get a hamburger, but there are two uh, instances that come to mind that that really kind of show me what it feels like to really be in need. Uh, the first one was me and Hollis, my granddad, were at a pasture not far from here. I was young. I was probably about six or seven years old, uh, maybe even a little younger than that, maybe around five. And we, we come across some, some swampy areas and, and my granddad's old gray Dodge got stuck. And now what's crazy is when I was younger, I was petrified of getting stuck or petrified of loud things, which is just the opposite now. But at that moment in time, I was scared to death. Now this was in the time before cell phones, so we needed somebody to come and assist us. And so luckily we walked up to where Penny and Butch lived and Penny was home and she was able to call grandmother and get grandmother to come pick us up. We needed assistance. Now granted, was that life or death? not necessarily but we did need assistance there was a feeling of need now the more recent time now granted it's been probably four or five years ago um well no no actually no it hasn't it's been probably probably before i was married so probably pushing around nine years ago wow doesn't time fly um so we were kayaking up at the nanahala and the nanahala was uh was was at flood stage and we went kayaking and it was way too way too high the water was to really be safe but we went anyway. And so I lost it in one of the uh, one of the rougher rapids that we had going down. And I wound up losing my boat and coming out of my boat. And so I needed help. I had a bad situation turn really worse when I lost my boat and my paddle. Luckily, I had a couple friends there and they were able to assist me and get me fixed up. So without further ado, I want you to really think about a time that you were in need. And what did you do with that? You know, was that time that you really spent earnest prayer? Was that something that you just kind of was like, oh, I'll get through it or whatever? And so I want to look at one of the main figures in the Bible, good old-fashioned Jonah, and I want to look to see how he prayed when he was in his time of need. So this comes from Jonah chapter 2. If you want to turn there, I'll give you a few seconds to turn there. Jonah chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 1 through 9. And you'll have to forgive me, and you'll have to forgive my absence at church. I've been relatively under the weather, and we've had some, some sickness at school that I've been trying to kind of stay away from everybody. So, um, like I said, you'll have to forgive my absence. And I'm still kind of fighting it off. You can hear it in my voice. So, chapter 2, verse 1. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the hearts of the seas and the flood that surrounded me. All of your waves and all of your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight, yet I shall again look upon my holy temple. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. The weeds were wrapped around my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed up on me forever, but yet you brought me up, my life from the pit. O Lord my God, when my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord and prayed to you. And my prayer came to you in your holy temple. 
Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Thanks be to God for his scripture. So need. Jonah was in need. Jonah was completely in need. He was in the belly of a fish. If I can't find in a, a, a better example of somebody that was in a desperate need, it was Jonah. Now granted, was he really in need of the fish? I'm going to dare say no. I'm going to say he was more in need when he was sinking to the bottom of the ocean. If you'll look back at verses 2, it says, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried and heard my voice. Yes, he's in the belly of the fish, but look to verse 5. The waters closed in to take my life. Before he was eaten, he was drowning. And like I said, I was in those waters at the Nantahala, and that is an insanely scary feeling. Now, granted, I wasn't in the same peril that Jonah was, but that is a helpless feeling when you can't get up to the surface and you can't uh, be able to sustain yourself. And so he was in need of God's grace and God's Savior. Savior. Also, look to verse 3. This is awesome. For you cast me into the deep, you as in God. God allowed this to happen. Sometimes God's going to allow you to be in need. And, and, and that's going to be one of those times when you can really sit back and say, Hey, look, I need you, God. I need you, Lord. Can you please come help your servant? And so as we keep kind of scrolling down and reading, I like what the last little bit says and, and the last little bit of nine. Salvation belongs to the Lord. This was a terrible situation for Jonah. Not even, not even a half a page across, Jonah's fleeing, running away from God. And then now he's begging God to help him help him and he's in the belly of a fish and he said salvation belongs to the Lord he realizes that the God that God saved him he realized that the Lord saved him and not a way that he expected so go back to need so whatever whether we're you know in a, in a life or death situation where we need God to come and literally save us to, from dying or just a, just a daily need let's be honest you can't make it daily on our own. We can't. No matter how hard I try to, to be a good role model for students at school, no matter how hard I try to be a good husband, no matter how hard I try to be a good deacon or a good servant at church, I will absolutely fail. 100%. Because one, my stubborn pride will get in the way and prevent me from becoming who God needs me to be. And so, am I really facing a life or death moment every day? You know, in a little bit of a crazy way, I think I am. Because Sin's attacking me all the time. Sin's attacking us all the time. And we got to pray for assistance and help for us to be saved from it. And we got to pray to where our mindset can be something along the lines of what Jesus and God needs us to be to fulfill his kingdom. So what I want to kind of close with is looking up at this house. Well, hello, cow. Running to the back of my truck. Um, look at it. It's on a rock foundation. It's not even poured. The backside might be falling in a little bit. The door is gone. Cows have been obviously walking around up there in it. But it's still standing. Through all Hurricane Opal, through the 94 tornado, all it didn't come through here that much. Through the 2011 tornadoes, although it really didn't come through here that much, it is still standing on just stacked rocks, the simplicity of it. So, as we close the night, when you're in need, you know, as we go through this transitional time in our church, or if you're in a transitional point in your life, Remember that it's, it's, it's fairly simple. You do as Jonah did. You, you yell out to the Lord. You pray with earnest. You pray with, pray with sincerity that you need help, that you can't do it on your own. There's no way that I can succeed in doing what God needs me to do without the, 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 the maker of the blueprint showing me. So just as this house is sitting on just a solid stacked rock foundation, ensure that your life is sitting on a, just a solid stacked rock foundation of Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a lot easier said than done. It takes work. I'm I'm still way far from it. My poor house is sliding backwards and forwards. But if you keep it on that solid rock of Christ and you pray earnestly, because you're always in need, and even in those times when you might not think it, still pray earnestly because God is going to allow you to do the things he needs you to do in his kingdom. So let's pray right quick, and then we'll have us a good Wednesday night evening, I guess, to rest. Father, thank you for this time once again. I appreciate strange little symbols that, that are that are in nature like this house as simple as it is sitting on that foundation here it is sitting here when there are hundreds of other houses around here that have the most complicated man-made foundations available that fell in whereas this one 
was made by the rocks you made and way before my time, way before anybody listened this time. Lord, help us to understand that our lives are no different than this house. If we keep ourselves rooted to your rocks, rooted to your rock foundation, they won't shift. Although as simple as they may be, just a stacked bunch of rock, just as simple as the gospel is that Jesus Christ died for us, it will not shift. It is what it is. It will survive all the storms. Lord, help us to pray to you when we're in need. Even when we don't feel like we're in need, we still need you in our life. Lord, thank you for your son, Jesus. In his name I pray. Amen. Guys, thank you for tuning in. I tried to keep it right around 10 minutes. Uh, I do apologize for the distraction of the cows. They seem to have found my, my pancakes that are for them in the back. So I'm going to try to get out and feed them right quick. But thank you once again. Pray for our church. And, and I, I want to pray for everybody involved in that, you know any type of sickness going around. And, and, and once again, thank you for turning in, or tuning in rather, and uh, have a great evening.